You know what? I think, teams, there's something on the seat. I think I left a box. Yeah, I need that little thing here. We're doing something different tonight. Now, I had invited, I just need the box. I invited the kids to come down front and sit with me so I can interact with you. Uh, Oren said he tried to get his to come down here with him and they wouldn't do it. So he didn't get to come down. Uh, Johnny, you can ask Roseanne if she wants to come down. And, and we'll, you know, any kids, that'd be fine. So we're going to do something tonight a little special, I hope. And in fact, I practiced all afternoon to see if this was going to work. Because we have a, I think, an interesting but difficult topic to talk about for a minute. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, kids. And this is one time that it's perfectly right to talk in church, okay? Because I'm going to ask a question. Here's the question. Do you know what it means when somebody says, take a chance? Take a chance. What does that mean? Somebody tell me. To take a chance. What does it mean? Who knows? What is it? Take a turn. That's exactly what it means. It means to take a turn. That's one meaning of it. All right. Try something else for someone else. That's probably true too. Anybody else? What take a chance means? Let me ask you this. Of course you are. Let me ask you this. If they tell you to take a chance, does it mean you don't know what's going to happen? Take a chance. Come on. Take a chance. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. It means we don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to try it anyway. All right? I want to explain something to you by an example right here. And I bet you never thought you'd see dice rolled in a worship setting. <laughs> but we're going to do it. All right. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use combinations of a couple of kids. All right. First of all, I'm going to start right here. You tell me a number, and it's going to be tough, okay? Between 5 and 30. Now, I'll give, give you a chance to think, okay? And then, B, you're going to take these. Is it okay for her to roll dice? <laughs> okay, all right. You're going to roll the dice in here and try to get his number. All right? Tell me your number. 20. 20. All right, here you go. Take those dice and roll them in there. Let's see if you get 20. How many is it? Okay, you fail. 19. I'm slow. Okay. Back up a grade. All right. 19. So, who's going who's gonna to keep up? Jason, I point you. You're the uh, stats guy. Okay. We missed one time. All right. Let's try something else. All right. You pick a number between 5 and 30, and then you roll the dice. Okay. What's the number? Six. All right, here you go. Roll the dice and try to get a six. Get it. No. Nine, 18, 20. How many is that we've missed? Two. That's exactly right. All right, let's try it again. All right. Pick a number between five and 30. Twelve. All right, here you go. Roll the dice right there. Can you do it? We're corrupting kids. Okay. Nine. 14, 21. You missed. Three. All right. Pick a number. 15. 15. You want to roll the dice? Put them right in there. 15. Nine and eight is 17, 18. Sorry. Okay. So we missed that one. How many is that? Four. All right. Let's see. Who wants to try back here? No, they cheat. <laughs> oh, them? Yeah. They're too old. Okay. Pick a number. 29. 29. All right, try to get 29. 12. 21. 24. You missed. How we doing? Oh, no. We missed again. All right. All right, Logan, pick a number. Let him, let him whisper one to you. Five? That's fine. Five's good. Five's good. 
You want to roll the dice? No. No. That's bad stuff, rolling dice. Okay, you want to roll the dice? Okay. The only righteous one up here. All right, go. Five. Three, four, five. Ten. How many, how many is that? Six. Six. We've missed six in a row. Hmm. Well, of course, pick a number. Between five and thirty. 19. All right, Ainsley, here you go. You ready? Ten, fifteen, nineteen, twenty. No. How many is that? Because I'm, I'm really not keeping up. So, you know, you've got to, all right. I think we have time to do. I, I, you're too young to be corrupted just yet. <laughs> When you grow up, pick a number. Um, 18. 18. Here you go. Good job. 9, 13, 21. Sorry. Okay. So we missed how many? We missed 8 out of 8. Now, let me tell you what chance is. A chance means that you don't know what's going to happen. And so you just, you have no control. You just throw something and make it happen. Now, here's what I want you to know. You're going to hear a lot of times where people say that the world just appeared. God didn't make it. It just happened. And it's called evolution. Well, it, it's, a, it's one I want you to understand, okay? Evolution. In other words, God didn't do it. It just happened all on its own. And here's what I want you to do. Every time you hear somebody say that, I want you to imagine there was nothing. And all of a sudden, somebody rolled the dice and said, create a world. Take a chance. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to show you some incredible things. Never use this thing, so let's see if it's going to work. Is it going to work? Oh, he is working on something. Let's take a chance on this. All right, here we go. All right, are you ready? Let's see if it does. All right, now somebody tell me, starting with the kids, what is this? Anybody know? Two, two different types of the same thing. Go. The one on the right is a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap, yes. And the other, yes. The one on the left is a pitcher. Pitcher plant, yes. What do they have in common? They both eat a chance. Yes. These plants get their food. By catching bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But, and you got it right. Let's see if you got it right. You got it right. Now, here's what happens. Right here, see that right there? Oh, isn't that so cool? Okay, right there, what happens is a bug will crawl up on top of that right there, and all of a sudden, it's really slick. And he falls down here, and there's a lot of stuff down there that eats him. It's a liquid. Yeah, it's a liquid. That's exactly right. Very good. Are y'all learning stuff from your daughter? <laughs> Always. Always. Okay. Now, this one over here, that's closed right now, but it opens wide up like this one back here, and a bug crawls inside, and it snaps shut, and then it eats the bug. Now, I want you to remember all these, okay? All right, there will be a test when we finish. All right, here's the next one. Now, can you see anything in there? What do you see? Anything? Rocks. Rocks. Mm -hmm. You see an octopus? Where's my... Oh, there it is. Right there. Yeah, it looks sort of like an octopus, but I'll tell you what it is. It's... This thing right here. 
da, da, da. Yeah, do you know what it's called? You know what it's called? Cuttlefish. Cuttlefish. That's exactly right. You got it. Now, do you know what that cuttlefish was doing in the first picture? He was hiding. Why do you think he was hiding? So another bigger fish wouldn't eat it. That's exact. Now you remember that. So so first of all, we got these plants that catch bugs. Then we have an animal that hides so nobody else, no other plant or animal will eat it. All right, let's do another one. It's a poison dart frog. Now, Dave Pear, you know about poison dart frogs. Let me tell you something. Do you know we... You know, we helped Mr. David go to Guyana, South America to teach people about Jesus, right? Well, down there, there are places, there are groups of people, they're called Amerindians. They live all in that part and around in South America and Central America. And they will take these frogs. Oh, I didn't put the name on there so you know. There's a particular kind of frog. There it is. They take their arrows and they rub them on the back of the frogs and then they shoot the arrows because the frogs have a poison on it. And when they shoot the arrows, the poison kills whatever they're shooting at. But the poison doesn't kill the frog that has it on its back. A frog. Yeah, frog, there you go. All right, let's try another one. I got a few of these. Oh, what is that? What? Anglerfish. You know anglerfish, right, from the movie? That has a moon on it. That's exactly right. Now, right there. You know what he's doing? Why is he doing it? An angler is another word for a fisherman. He is fishing for a fish in the dark water. He shines that light. And these little bitty fish will go, ooh, that is so pretty. And all of a sudden, his big old teeth grab him and eat him. <laughs> it's true, Ed. It really is. <laughs> and it's sad for the fish. Okay. All right. Angler fish. All right. Here we go. Spider lab. Spider lab. <laughs> it looks like spider web, but it's not. She's right again. Whew, I feel sorry for y'all. <laughs> nerves. Now, you can tell you what nerves are. Nerves are, is the system in your body that takes messages from your brain and tells the rest of your body what to do. And it, it tells your brain what your hand is touching or your feet are touching. It's called sensation. Now look, did you know that in your body right now, there are 90,000 miles of nerves? What? Yep, some of us have a few more around the midsection, but 90,000 miles, and they don't get crossed up. Here is what is cool. I found this out the other day. A lot of us who are older have a friend, Russie Jones, Charles Coy's daughter. <coughs> About a year and a half, two years ago, Russie had beginning to get something called Parkinson's. Park and she was starting to shake. And some people shake really bad and they can't walk anymore. She went to an experimental Procedure. Did you know they found, the doctors say, that every nerve in your body does one thing? In other words, what, there's one nerve that helps you see, one nerve that helps you hear, one nerve that does everything, but there's a nerve in your ankle 
that if you take it out and put it somewhere else, it becomes the nerve that you need. Did you know that? And it's the only one so far they found in the whole body that you can do that with. So you know what they did? They went in her ankle. They took out one of those string-looking things, which is a nerve, and they opened up her head and they put the nerve in her brain because there was a, a place in her brain that wasn't working right. And so they ran that nerve across it and all of a sudden her hands don't shake anymore. And that's the only nerve in the body that they could use to do that. Is that cool? That is cool. All right. You're not going to get this one. What? No. <laughs> Makes me feel great to fool little kids. Okay. What? No. Okay. We're moving forward. We're on this one now. <laughs> now, now, has anybody, have you ever been dizzy? Well, do you know that inside your head, inside your ears, there's a place that keeps you from being dizzy and keeps the world from spinning around. And in your ear, there are these little crystals. Well, they're in the tubes, behind the tubes. And sometimes those crystals move out of place and you get dizzy and you can't stand up. And so now what they can do, see, ya. did you do that? Okay, cheater. Now what happens is, what happens is somebody, they found out, can take your head and move it in certain ways to put the crystals back in place so you can stand up without falling. How many of you knew that? A lot of people did, right? Yeah. Now tell me that. Is that cool? That's cool. I got another one for you. Aha. Uh -huh. Not a spider. Not a cockroach. Yes, it is a beetle. It's a certain kind of beetle. My favorite beetle. If you can have a favorite beetle, this is my favorite beetle. Yep. This is what it's called. It is called a bombardier beetle. Let me tell you why. Yeah, you've heard about them? Let me show you something. You see those two wings right there? Well, underneath those wings, on this side, there is a tube. And on this side, there's another tube. And up at this part, there is a a place where there is some liquid and over here in a separate place is some liquid and those tubes stick into those places where the liquid is. Now, let's say that this bombardier beetle comes across one of his enemies and his enemy starts chasing him and he starts running. Well, this bombardier beetle, when his enemy gets too close, he can lift up his wings and from that tube and that tube, he takes the liquid from here and the liquid from here. He shoots one out this side, one out this side, and when they come together right here, it creates a spark. And it hits the enemy and makes him run away. That's just how it works. Now, let me tell you something. Let me ask you something. Well, now listen. Do you know why those two liquids have to stay separate in two different places in his body? Why? Yeah, you know, if, if, if the liquids didn't stay separate, he would blow up. Now, here's what we're talking about tonight. And he will boom. He would go boom. That's exactly right. Now, 
here's what we're going to do. Let's say the first beetle, the very first beetle said, hmm, I think I would like to have two tubes to shoot something at my enemy. Because God didn't make it, you know. That's what they tell you. They just decided to do it. That's what they're going to tell you. They're going to say, oh, the beetle one day decided that he was tired of running from his enemies without a weapon. And so he decided, I'm going to have my weapon, and my weapon is going to be these two tubes inside my body, and they're going to have these two places to store liquid, and I'm going to shoot fire at him. So the first beetle, because God didn't do it, right, he's going to take a chance. He is going to take a chance, and he's going to create the two places and the two tubes. Okay, and he says, if I roll a 17, then I'm going to be a beetle with two tubes and two places to hold the gas. 10, 13, 14. He just blew up because he didn't get it right. He just, there was nobody controlling it. He just said, I think I'd like to have one. But instead, he forgot to keep those liquids separate in his body and he blew up. And now, you know how many bombardier beetles we have? A zero. Now, let me tell you something. That is what they're going to teach you someday in school. And they're going to tell you that God did not plan all this stuff. It just happened. They'll tell you crazy things like this. One day, there was a snake on the ground, and he said, I don't want to be on the ground anymore. I think I'm going to grow feathers and become a bird. And he did. That's the kind of crazy stuff they're going to tell you. But if there's not somebody doing it, then you're just taking a chance. And Jason, how many chances did we take? And how many did we get right? Zero. When you take a chance, it doesn't work. God doesn't take chances. He just does it. And since he does it, it works. So all those things, all those plants and animals and stuff in your body, it is there not because somebody rolled the dice and it just happened to be right. It's there because God said, I want this and I want it to work this way and therefore it does. And you have the right for the rest of your lives when somebody older than you tries to tell you that God did not do this, you have the right to think in your head, well, I'm going to respect you because you're older, but you're wrong. God did all this. He didn't take a chance. He just did it. Now, you think you can remember that? I think that's a good thing to remember. So, we remember this. Let's go back to the verse that we read just a minute ago and listen to what it says. Since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, can you see God with your eyes? Mm -mm. But you can know he exists. You know there's a God. You know why? Because we can understand him through looking at the things that he made. And what are we going to understand? That he is powerful and that he is God. That is, there's nobody better than him. And all of those things that he made cannot be explained by chance. They can only be explained by God. And as you look at all those wonderful things that God made, it will tell you how powerful he is. And you remember that, and it will help you for the rest 
of your life. Deal? Deal. Deal. Why is my advice in deal? Everybody says deal because, well, they, well, they're all agreeing. They just didn't all say it. I yeah, you agreed. That's okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you remember that. And I hope it helps you in the future. Okay. Before we close, as I told you this morning, if you want to talk about being right with God. You know, kids come to me all the time and want to talk about what does God want me to do? Well, tonight he wants you to realize that he made everything that you see. That's what he wants you to do. But if you want to talk more about that, then you come see me sometime and we'll talk about it. If you are here tonight, you need the prayers of this church. You need us to help you in some way in your life. If you want to be right with the Lord, we're not going to leave without singing a song to encourage you to do what's right. So if we can help you, let's stand together and sing this song, please. Oh, that's great to be God.